multiple times. And um, these uh, declarations and definitions both qualify as uh, what are called uh, declaration statements. So um, we also have expressions and um, expressions are basically the meat of your program. There are um, several different kinds of expressions and most of them are built up by um, what are called primary expressions and those include your identifiers um, the key word this that we'll learn about when we start talking about object-oriented programming uh, any literal values you may, you may have and then anything between parentheses um, that's an expression is considered a primary expression and then you can use these to build up other kinds of um, other kinds of expressions as well and so you end up with something called an expression statement if you want the statement form and that's an expression followed by a semicolon or uh, even just a semicolon by itself uh, as odd as that sounds so um, then we have scope and scope basically determines the accessibility in the lifetime of symbols and so you can create scopes by um, taking what are called compound expressions and those are regions that um, are um, surrounded by curly braces and any symbol that you declare in that scope um, is automatically a part of that scope uh, inside that compound expression rather and compound expressions are also sometimes known as blocks and so scopes can also be nested and what a nested scope is, is it's a scope inside of another scope and so uh, there are some rules that follow this and um, basically the first is that if you have a symbol defined in an external scope then it's available in the internal scope and then also if you have two symbols by the same name in the external scope and in the internal scope then the internal scopes version of the symbol is used and so um, of course once the internal scope goes away then anything within the internal scope does as well now we have two special kinds of scopes we have what's called the global namespace and this is um basically anything that's defined um that's declared outside of um the actual um any other scope and then we have local scope which uh is a scope of a function uh, so to speak. We'll learn about functions here in a bit. And so um, most of the expressions that you have are only permitted inside of um, local scope, or rather most of the expression statements. And um, you also, uh, if you have a compound expression by itself, then that's often called an artificial scope. That can be useful sometimes so uh, we have as one kind of symbol uh, what's called a variable and the variable is basically the state of uh, of data and so what you do whenever you declare a variable is you're basically telling the compiler hey reserve some space for the state of this variable and variables have a type and a name so uh, for instance hemp foo is a variable declaration and any time you declare a variable you also uh, define it as well you can uh, later assign a value to a variable by using the assignment operator and you can even use uh, assignment during declaration as well so um, if you assign the variable for the first time it's a special time called initialization and we also have symbols which are called functions um, and the best way that you can think of this are um, is that um, a function is basically a list of actions that occur in sequence it's a list of statements and so functions um, of course can take parameters like our preprocessor functions but unlike with the preprocessor uh, the 
order of evaluation of function um, parameters actually does matter because you can stick expressions in each uh, in the um, parameter list and those expressions get evaluated um, uh, left to right uh, in sequence and of course you can have an empty parameter list as well which um, which can be useful in some um, in some cases in um, uh, so-called um, I guess verb like uh, functions and functions also have what's called a return type and basically um, most functions have what you might consider to be an answer and this is its return value this is um, this is uh, the answer of the function and um, you can use the return keyword to specify that and we'll see a use case for that at the end of the um, of this episode so um, you might have um, a need for a function that doesn't return anything because there's no way to meaningfully uh, return a value and the return type in that case should be something called void which means that you don't have any data possible and so for obvious reasons uh, you can't have void variables but you can have uh, functions with void return types because that actually makes sense um, and then you also have um, this process of uh, function declaration and that actually turns out to be different from defining a function itself and so you can declare a function by simply uh, starting out with its return type putting the name of the function and then in parentheses putting its um, its parameter list and notice here, uh, notice here that the parameters are actually typed or you can have an empty parameter list such as in this uh, void do it function and so um, the uh, return type itself if you combine that with the parameter list that um, is something known as the function signature and then if you define a function it also includes the uh, the body which um, is basically uh, if you take out that semicolon in the declaration and then replace it with a block and then put all those statements in the block then that creates um, the local scope for the function um, and so uh, you need to be able to use the function of course and in order to do this we have a special kind of expression called a function call uh, there are probably a few terms that we can go over before we actually discuss how to use one and um, in a function call there's this thing called the caller and the caller is actually the entity responsible uh, for making a function call this is more often than not um, a function itself and um, then you have the callee which is actually the function being called so it's like employer versus employee right and then you also have uh, the formal parameters for the function which um, are the parameters that were specified in the uh, callee's declaration and then there are the arguments which are the actual values passed to the function and the function call itself and so um, as we said the function call is uh, actually an expression you just put the name of the function and then the argument separated by commas in the um, in between parentheses in order to specify that function call and then we also um, what what happens here is um, when we do that the um, function is then invoked with those parameters and um, the formal parameters are actually variables and so what will happen is that the um, uh, formal parameters will be assigned the values that you put in the parameter list whenever you made the function call and then um, and then after that you uh, invoke the uh, function body you actually perform the function and so um, then you have 
the actual value of the function call itself, um, which turns out being the function's return value, which means, of course, that void functions um, don't have a value associated with them, and so you can't, like, use them in certain kinds of expressions. But, um, anyway, um, there's something that might seem a little bit quirky at first that happens with functions. Um, and basically the scope of the caller is saved and then temporarily replaced with the uh, callee's local scope. And so you can't actually reference uh, symbols that were defined in the caller scope, but fear not because the um, the actual scope of the caller comes back at the end of the function. And um, then another thing that happens as well is um, that at the end of the um, of the function call that you return to that place and the um, you return to the the place where you left off in that expression. And so later on, I'll. I'll you might be able to see where that's actually useful. Perhaps I'll go over this in the next episode. And there's also something called undefined behavior that you have to be aware of. And so here's the deal. Um, the C++ standard actually doesn't require the compiler to check whether or not you initialize a variable or whether or not you actually return from a function. and um, there's um, a saying that applies to other things as well in life, and that is uh, just because you can do it doesn't mean that you should. And the reason in this particular case is because um, if you try to use these symbols afterwards, then um, the resulting values will end up being something called garbage. And yes, this is actually a technical term, believe it or not. And uh, what garbage means is that that value is intrinsically meaningless. Um, so if you have garbage in your program being produced, then you get what's called undefined behavior, which means that you can't rely on your program to, um, to work correctly anymore. And um, you need to avoid this because trying to figure out um, what's causing a bug in the midst of undefined behavior can be just a complete pain in the ass, so just don't do it. Um, uh, not unless you know what you're doing, and in most cases you don't, so always initialize your variable, uh, variables and also provide return types if it's not, if the function's not returning void. And so uh, now we're here at this last step, and this step is something called linking. And so in linking, what we're doing is we're taking multiple compiled translation units, so uh, taking their object code, and we're putting them together. And um, this could be useful if you want to reuse code, for instance. And uh, it also helps with the uh, the organization of your code, which can become very important in larger projects. And um, if you remember, our compiler actually outputs object code for a single translation unit, and then we link them together to produce um, whatever our final product is, which is usually a program. Um, it's also called an executable, and that's what we'll be calling programs from now on for the most part because you can also have link libraries that you can produce with the linker. And um, the purpose of a link library is to collect related code that um, you could then use in another project. And um, there are a lot of do uh, benefits to this. First of all, the link library is completely separate from your project, and so it's easier to check its correctness. And they can also um, be shipped separately um, as a kind of standardized package that anybody can use. And so uh, other projects can use this as a springboard to write more complex code and to um, uh, essentially avoid reinventing the wheel.